How do you tell a good bread is without tasting it? Not the smell, not the look, but the sound of the crust. Listen. Only great bread sound this way. The only way to get the best. Colette said it herself. This is what great bread sounds like. Today we're making sandwich size baguettes for a separate Bon Me video that I'm gonna be doing. But whatever you do with these, these are gonna make some of the best sandwiches of your life. So the recipe's gonna start right here. But as always, I wanna cover a couple key cooking tips and knowledge by comparing this to my focaccia recipe. They're about 95% similar, but there's a couple of key differences that we're gonna cover. Also, yes, I like adding unnecessary effects to the intros of these videos. So my focaccia recipe and this baguette recipe are both 75% hydration doughs, which yields a thin, crispy crust and an airy but even crumb. The only difference in ingredients is there's no olive oil in the baguette recipe. No olive oil just leads to a slightly different texture on the interior and different brownie on the outside. Besides the olive oil, the recipe is the exact same up until shaping. Obviously, focaccia is baked in a large pan, but baguettes are usually in a tapered cylinder. Now, shaping is probably the trickiest part to get down for first-timers, but I'll show you guys how to do it no problem. After shaping, we need to score the dough, which is absolutely critical. Those slashes you see on the dough aren't for decoration, though they do look pretty good. Instead, these slashes provide a vent for gases to escape while it's baking, so our loaf opens up. This is known as oven spring. Without scoring, the gas will look for the weakest spot to escape, which could be out the side or the bottom. With scoring, we're able to control where those gases are going to escape. Lastly, we need steam while baking the baguettes. This is critical too because the steam on the crust will help keep the dough soft, allowing the yeast to expel more gas in the oven, so the loaf is gonna spring open more. Additionally, that steam will help starch coagulate on the surface, giving us a nice shiny and brown crust. So with all these bread videos, hopefully you guys are starting to see the similarities and differences between various bread products. I mean, predominantly it's all the same process, but there's just kind of subtle changes here and there that are gonna lead to a different baked product. But anyway, let's make these, and I can't wait to make a banh mi out of these. Start by pouring 375 milliliters of 100 degree water into a bowl. To that, we're going to add five grams of instant yeast along with a spoonful of flour and stir that until it is dissolved. You're gonna let this mixture stand for five to 10 minutes until a light foam surfaces and little bubbles are visible. This is proofing and it is done to test the viability of the yeast. If there is no foam surface or little bubbles, the yeast is likely dead and should be discarded for new yeast or else we won't get a rise in our baguettes. Meanwhile, add 500 grams of all-purpose or bread flour and 10 grams of salt to a large mixing bowl. Once the yeast is proofed, pour in the mixture and vigorously mix the dough with your hands until no dry flour remains in the bowl and a cohesive mass forms. Probably about one to two minutes. The dough will be very sticky at this point, so cover with plastic wrap and let it rest for 15 minutes. Resting will allow the flour to start hydrating all on its own and make the dough a little bit easier to work with when we start stretching and folding. Once rested, grab a little bowl with water and dip your hands into it to help prevent sticking. You're gonna perform a stretch and fold by grabbing a corner of the dough in the bowl, lift straight up to stretch the dough as high as it will go without tearing, and then fold it over to the other side. You're going to rotate the bowl and perform three more reps of stretch and folds. Once you have done four folds, you're going to turn the dough over onto itself, cover it again with plastic wrap and let it rest another 25 to 30 minutes. This is one set of a stretch and fold, and you're gonna perform three more sets with 25 to 30 minutes of rest in between. For each set of stretch and folds, the dough should feel more elastic and stretch further without tearing, and it will start to capture some air bubbles on the outside. The stretch and fold method is better suited than kneading for a high hydration dough like this because the dough is naturally sticky and this method reduces hand contact. Additionally, the stretch and fold will allow for a more open crumb when baked because we aren't pushing the air out of the dough. We're just lightly stretching it up and folding it over. 
After the fourth and final set of stretch and folds, you want to test for gluten development by cutting off a little piece of the dough and stretching it very thin to see if you can get a gluten window that is slightly transparent. This gluten window test is the key to understanding if the flour has been hydrated enough, meaning our gluten is developed. If the dough tears before getting to a slightly translucent window, let it rest for another 25 minutes and perform another set of stretch and folds. After the fourth and final set of stretch and folds, sprinkle a little bit of flour over your work surface. Now using a bench scraper, we're gonna divide the dough into six equal portions, roughly 145 grams each. This is gonna give us a nice sandwich size baguette. Once portioned, using your fingertips, lightly press and stretch each piece of dough into a rough rectangle shape about five inches wide. And a note on the flour, try to use as little as possible, just enough to be able to shape it and it's not overly sticking to your hands. Definitely don't overdo that flour though. Once everything is portioned and in a rough rectangle shape, cover the dough pieces with a clean towel and let these rest for 15 minutes. Once the portions are rested, spray some baking spray on your hand, the dough, and the work surface to help prevent sticking. Now take a rectangle of the dough and work it into a more even shaped rectangle that we will fold into a baguette. You're gonna fold the top edge of the dough down to the center, pressing lightly to tighten the dough and form an edge. Now fold the dough in half again, down to the bottom, to form a seam. You're going to use the heel of your hand or your fingertips and lightly press that to seal the seam of the dough at the bottom. At this point you should have a log of dough, seal side down. All you have to do for the tapered ends is place your hands on the outside edges of the dough and roll with a little bit of pressure. This is what is going to give us that signature baguette shape. I'll show you guys a shot of the process from my POV as well. As before, start with the dough in a rough rectangle and fold it to the center of the dough. Using your fingertips, gently press the seam of the dough together. And now fold again to the bottom of the dough and seal that seam with your fingertips or the heel of your hand. For the tapered ends, apply even pressure on both sides and roll the dough with your hands. The key is to not overwork the dough here. We want to maintain that airiness in our baguette and use that baking spray as needed to avoid sticking. Repeat this process with each baguette and place on a baking sheet size piece of parchment paper. I use two pieces of parchment paper, three baguettes on each. Now cover the baguettes with a towel and let them proof until the baguettes are about one and a half times in size. This will probably take 45 to 60 minutes. With 15 minutes of proofing left, preheat the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit on the convection setting. 475 if you don't have convection. Now fill a baking pan halfway with water and place it on the bottom rack of the oven and place a metal baking sheet on the middle rack. This pan of water will help create a steamy environment for that crisper crust and the baking sheet will be preheated so the baguettes can be slid on with the parchment paper and immediately start baking for a faster oven spring. With the baguettes proofed and the oven set up, we need to score each baguette with one long slash at a 45 degree angle to allow for the oven spring. But before we do that, here is the saddest thing that has ever happened to me while baking bread. This fell out and flattened that. This small cutting board fell out of the overhead cabinet and absolutely flattened two of my precious proofed loaves. I was a little pissed off, not gonna lie. I ended up having to reshape and let them proof for another 45 minutes. Anyway, let's get back to scoring. For scoring, I'm using a bread lame, which is just a fancy way to hold a razor. You could absolutely do the same thing with a sharp knife. Slice in about one half inch into the dough in one long stroke. Now, you could also do some small slashes if you like for a slightly different look. Once scored, pull the preheated baking sheet out of the oven and slide the parchment paper with the baguettes onto it. Now just spritz them with a spray bottle of warm water. This water is gonna sit on the surface of the crust before steaming, which will help us with that shiny, crisp crust. 
Now add the pan to the middle rack of your preheated oven and set a timer to bake for five minutes. After five minutes, you can open it up and we're gonna spritz these baguettes one more time. You should be able to see some nice oven spring when you open up the dough after five minutes. Now continue baking the baguettes for another 12 to 15 minutes until the crust is nice and golden brown, crispy, and the bread sounds hollow when it is thumped. Take the baguettes out of the oven and place them on a wire rack to completely cool before slicing in and enjoying. And just listen to that sweet, sweet sound. Once we slice in, you can see that beautifully thin but crisp crust with a nice open interior of the crumb. The texture is absolutely to die for. As always, the full recipe will be up on my website, which will be linked below, so you guys can make these for yourself. And like I said, anything you put in these is gonna be absolutely delicious. For me, I am making that banh mi, so the only goal that I have for the next 24 hours is to not finish these, at least save one for the video tomorrow. But that's gonna wrap it up for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you're new, definitely drop me a like and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.